command line argument means what? Now we know that whenever we declare a method, that method may or may not take any parameters. But if a method taking any parameters, then while calling the method, we need to pass the parameters. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So uh, for example, if you are creating a method like this, so I'm creating static um, void some method. I'm taking uh, two integer parameters, right? So I'm taking integer x and integer y. That means while calling this some method, I need to pass two values or not? Yes. And whenever we pass these values, then those values will go and sit in this two variable or not? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now, now come to this part. So if you look at the signature of this main method, then this main method taking uh, one array, string array as an argument. So have we passed any parameter to this method? No, right? But then also it is still executing. But if you want to pass this parameter, then can we pass? Can you call uh, this main method from anywhere else? No. So you want to, this main method is going to be executed by the operating system when our program execution start and we do not have any chance to pass this parameter or call this uh, function from our code uh, why because if we call this method then it is going to be like an infinite program or continuously it is going to be executed right so somehow if you want to pass parameter to this uh, uh, some argument to this value or to this parameter if you want to pass some argument or if you want to pass some values to this argument, right, this string argument, then how you will going to pass? This is where command line argument, command line comes to picture, right? Command line means some configuration is there. Using those configurations, we can pass any number of parameters, any type of parameters, and those parameters are going to be sit on this uh, variable, right? Or you can say on this array. Once the parameter value is come to this place, then you can access and whatever the thing you can do, you can do it, right? Let's uh, uh, see the definition. We know that we can para, we can pass parameters to a function as an argument. See, in this case, this is a function. This is your local parameter, or you can say this is your formal parameter, right? So if you want to pass, uh, uh, if the method taking some parameter, then you need to pass some argument. Argument means this value. This value is nothing but your argument. So this is what I'm saying. We know that we can pass parameter to a function as an argument, but what about the main method? Can we pass parameter to the main method? Yes, we can pass parameters to the main method and this is possible through command line arguments. Then what is command line argument? Now the argument which are passed by the user or programmer to the main method are termed as command line argument. The argument or values that you pass to the main method are termed as command line argument. Is that clear? What is command line argument? Yes. Okay. The second point, uh, see, the main method is the starting point from where the program execution starts. We know that. So whenever we run our application, the main method is the starting point for our application to be executed, right? So this is the starting point of our application to be executed. The most important point that you need to remember is that main method does not in, accept any parameter from any method. That means you cannot call this main method from here, right? So if you call this li like this, so it is not acceptable, right? So you can see. So you can pass, but it is not acceptable because this method is going to be start by default, right? You cannot start your program execution from some method. Yes or no, program execution is always going to start from this main method. So if you call like this, it, it's like an infinite loop. Infinite loop means what? Now suppose I'm creating one string argument.
right? See what I'm doing. Okay. In this case, what will happen? See. Okay, let me close this one. See, what is this? This is an infinite program. Why? Can anybody tell me why I'm getting this? The main function is calling itself. Yeah, so program execution is going to start from this function. This function call this function. And this function again call this function. So when this function calls, then this function is going to be executed. So you should not uh, call your main method from any other method from your application. If you call, then what will happen? You will get this infinite kind of a loop, right? Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. So we should not call this function now. But what is our requirement? Now, please observe. So here, what I'm doing, I'm writing this. Now I'm expecting that the argument uh, having three parameters and I just want to print the value of all these parameters, right? As this is an argument and uh, you know how to access the array in your uh, traditional programming languages. We are going to discuss array in our uh, csf.net, but for now the same process. If you are creating an array, then you can access the array based on the index position and arrays are going to be zero index based. Zero index based means what? Now, first element is at the zeroth location, second element is at uh, uh, first location, and the third element is going to be on the second indexed position, right? So now my requirement is this, uh, uh, whenever the program execution starts, this array should have at least three values, and I need to print those three values in the console. Now, now if you run the application, then what will happen? See, now can just check. Okay, so I think uh, I have not modified the things. Okay, let me. Okay, now, now you can see this array is having how many elements? Zero element. Yes or no? String of a zero means what? That this uh, array size is zero. Size, you know what? So whenever you are creating an array, you need to specify the size. You need to specify the length. Size or length means what? How many elements this array can hold? And currently the array length is zero. Zero means currently this array contains how many elements? Zero element, right? And if the array doesn't have any element, and if you want to access the index position by using the, uh, if you want to access the array element by using the index position, then what will happen? You will get index out of bound or exception. Please observe. So now I'm starting executing this. So what I'm getting index was outside the bound of the array. Say so index out of range exception. Why I'm getting this exception? Because we are trying to access the element. We are trying to access the element at the zero location, but the uh, but at the zero location there are no such element. That means the array is empty, and on the empty array. That means there is no element in the zeroth location, no element in the first location, no element in the second location. The array doesn't have any element, but we are trying to access the array. This is the reason why we are getting this exception. Why? Because we are, because we are not passing any uh, element, we are not passing any argument, we are not passing any values to this array. Now the question is how I'm how I can pass command line values to this uh, argument, right? So if you want to pass command line argument, then what you need to do? So please observe. So right click on your, on your project, select properties, right click on your project, select the properties window, or then you need to go to the debug section, right? So there are many options, build, build event, debug, right? We will discuss what all these are going for the one by one. But for now, select the debug option, and you will see there is an option called command line arguments, right? So in command line arguments, currently I am expecting my main method to be except uh, three arguments. So I'm uh, passing value one, I'm passing value two. So uh, then you need to give a space bar. So 
the each element is going to be separated by a space and whatever value you are passing from this command line argument that will come as a string string means it might be you can pass only alphabet from here you can pass alpha numeric from here see this is value one i'm the passing this is value i'm passing this is one two three four that means i'm passing alpha numeric i'm passing only alphabet i'm passing only numeric but this is acceptable because so whatever value we are going to <coughs> pass from the command line argument by default all the values are going to be <coughs> sorry give me one minute <coughs> so whatever the value you are passing from your application through command line argument all the values are coming as a string so in a string variable you can uh, store only alphabet you can store alpha numeric and you can store only numeric that is acceptable right so now the first value what is value one will come and sit in this uh, zeroth location and the second value will come and sit in the first location and the third value will come and sit in this uh, location now if you run the application then you will see that the values in the console window let's run the application now please observe the output first argument value one second argument value third argument one two three four is that clear guys yes okay so now now one more thing so here we are passing the argument as a string value alpha numeric but what in the case if I want to pass only numeric values, can anybody tell me? So instead of this, what I'm passing one, two, three, and I'm passing four, five, point six, seven. So I'm passing one integer and I'm passing one a double. Then how you can do this? So in this case, if you run the application like this, then it will be consider this as a string value, right? It will be considered the value as a string value, but I don't want string value. I want them as a numeric value. So in that case, what do you need to do? You need to do typecasting. So you know how to do. Suppose this is a string. So if you want to convert this to an integer variable, what is the mechanism? Convert dot to int 32. And the second value is a double value, but it is coming as a string argument. So what you need to do? Convert dot to double. Is that clear? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, if you run the application, you will see the values are like this. But but what else? So instead of this, uh, instead of this one, two, four, four, five, six, one. If I'm passing high, then what will happen in this case? Can anybody tell me? Is it's high? Is can can the string high convert to double? So you will not get any compile time error. But at the wrong sure. time, what will happen? It is unable to convert that string to double type. So it will throw some wrong time exception. Please see. So what is input string was not in a correct form. So so whenever you are facing that input string was not in a cut, uh, correct format, it means the data type uh, mismatch. Data type mismatch in the sense the source value and the destination data type are not compatible. Source is a string type, destination is a double type. So no, not compatible and hence it is unable to convert the value and hence it is giving you that exception. And whenever uh, the array, so, suppose in this case, uh, how many elements we are passing from the command line? We are passing two elements, right? Now, if I try to access the third element, what will happen? Please observe. So third element means index position two. Now let's uh, do this four, five, six, seven. So only two elements are we are passing. And please observe when we are getting the error. Okay. So program execution start from the main method. I'm passing this one. I'm pass uh, executing this one. This statement is executed. This statement is executed. When this statement is executed, we are getting index was outside the bound of the array. Why? Because now, if you look at the array, 
So it is having only two elements, string two means zero, one and two. And we are trying to access the third element. So don't confuse it these two with these two. These two means this is the length of the array, means it can contain maximum of two elements. And these two means it is the index position of the array. And the index position is always starting from the zero, right? So zero means what? Now first element. One means what? Second element. Two means what? Third element. And here string of two means what? That the size of the array is two. Size of the array is two means it has only two index position. Index position zero, index position one. Index position zero refers to the first element. Index position one refers to the second element. And when you try to access the third element, so in this case, you will get this runtime exception, index out of range exception. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. And, and one more thing. <clears throat> in real time, whenever you are developing any application, generally as for the Microsoft documentation, some configuration uh, values, some application level configuration values you need to pass if required from the command line algorithm. But but in real time application, nobody is using this command line argument, right? So what we are generally using, we are generally using app config as well as uh, web config. Suppose you are developing one application, uh, console application or desktop application, you will have this app config file. And if you are developing a web application, then you will have web config file. So using app config and web config, we can register our application level variable, right? like connection string like uh, so, suppose you want to check whether uh, the uh, two factor authentication should be enabled or disabled you can provide one configuration in the uh, configuration file so when you whenever you are seeing this uh, this did, uh, dot config means it is a configuration file so whatever app config means whatever for this is your application configuration file so whatever the requirement whatever the variables you required application level variables you require for this application you can define those inside the app config file going forward we'll discuss whenever we are going to discuss edio.net entity framework right at that time i will show you the real time use of this app config file how you can define the <coughs> database configuration details inside the app config file so we'll see all this thing in practical but for now you have to remember if you want to pass some application level configuration which is going to be shared by each and everyone or if you want to set uh, from the beginning of the application then you can pass through the command line but command line argument are very very rarely used i can say nobody is using nowadays command line argument uh, register people are going uh, people are interested in app config and the web config